Good morning, explorers. It's so nice to see everybody today. And I wonder if we're going to get any more snow. Oh, so exciting. First little bit of snowfall. My puppies were outside playing in it, and they love the snow. They just lick it, and then they roll around in it. It's so cute. So I hope you got a chance to go outside and touch it and just enjoy. Just enjoy the snow. It's so pretty. Now, today we are going to be working on project number 15, and it's the self-portrait. Ooh. Now, we did make a self-portrait in kindergarten, and you were in space because it had to do with our outer space art show that we didn't have, but you made your head and you made it inside of a space helmet. And then you were looking at some planets around. So you guys, you guys actually, uh, kindergarten got to finish it. So that was awesome. So that's a self-portrait. It's when you draw or paint or make any sort of a picture or a sculpture of yourself. So when you create a likeness of yourself, that's a self-portrait. Now just a portrait is if you drew a picture of someone. If you drew a picture of somebody in your family, that would just be a portrait. Right? And a portrait is usually from like here and up. You can think of like your school picture. Yeah, that's a school portrait. So what we're going to do, I'm going to show you over here. This is a portrait that I made this summer. And I just used, um, I made it blonde hair because my hair was lighter then. It's a little bit darker now that fall and winter is coming. So that is a portrait. And we're going to add a little bit of a fun background. And you'll get to decide what you want to add in the back. Now this one is made with oil pastels. So if you happen to have oil pastels, you can use them. Otherwise, we're just going to use crayons. Okay, that's fine too. Now when we're talking about self-portraits, I want you to think about the vocabulary words portrait, which we talked about that. A self-portrait is when you draw a picture of yourself. A portrait is if you drew a picture of somebody else. Okay? And then pattern. We're going to add some fun patterns around our portrait. You can see I made a red and white upside down bumpy line pattern. I like that pattern because it reminds me of my art room and being an ice cream parlor. And I made the shirt green because green's my favorite color. And our third word, vocabulary word, is proportion. Now, when you're working on a self-portrait, you have to think about proportion, right? You don't want one eye a lot bigger than the other, right? So your eyes are the same, your nose is the same on both sides, and your mouth is the same. Okay? Because if you cut yourself, drew a line right down the middle, you would be the same on both sides. And that's called symmetrical. So you are symmetrical. So we want to definitely see good proportion in your self-portrait. Now, if I turn this way and we look over here, the artist we're going to be talking about is Leonardo da Vinci. Now, Leonardo da Vinci is famously, famously known for, you might have guessed it, the Mona Lisa. Now, this portrait is from the 16th century, and it's thought to be the most famous portrait in the entire world. Yes. And you can tell that it was created a long time ago because look at how dark everything looks. A lot of times all of our portraits or pictures today are bright and happy and we're told to smile big. 
And you can just tell that she's very calm. Her clothes are darker. The background's a little bit dark. And it's just, you can tell it's an older style. Okay. Now, if we look, they say that you, if you look at her eyes, they follow you around the room. Now, I don't know if that's true, but you could be sitting anywhere in the room and it kind of looks like she's looking at you. I just think that's funny. And it's kind of true if you stare at it for a while and move around. But it's also kind of neat. It's sort of like an optical illusion, like we talked about when we made our op art projects. And it's just a very intense portrait. I really like it, and I hope you guys do too. So you can Google it, okay? You can look it up on um, any sort of Google images, and you can find more pictures of the Mona Lisa. You can find where people turn like a cat into the Mona Lisa or a dog. So those are kind of fun to see too, because she's so famous. She's been around for a long time, and pretty much everybody knows who the Mona Lisa is in every country every every school teaches about the Mona Lisa so it's really important that you can recognize this portrait you know that it's the Mona Lisa and that Leonardo da Vinci painted her in the 16th century okay so try to remember that for me and I'll quiz you on it next year all right boys and girls now we get to make a self-portrait. If you have a mirror, that would be awesome. Go get it. If not, get your white paper and your crayons and meet me back here in just a minute, all right? All right, bye boys and girls. Hi boys and girls, I'm back. You can take one white nine by 12 piece of paper out of your handy dandy art packet it's getting kind of thin, isn't it? We've done a lot of projects. And you can use a pencil if you want to, to draw. I know self-portraits are sometimes kind of hard, but it's up to you. Or you can just use your crayon. I'm going to use a tan. And this is how you're going to start. Okay, think of about the size of my hand or a little bit bigger you're going to start by making a U shape on your paper good next you're going to add a neck so give yourself a neck it's a curved line on each side and it's probably about the width of your hand. Good job. Now you want to think about your eyes, your nose, and your mouth. So, about part way down, you want to make, looks like a rainbow line, and then another upside down rainbow line and then a rainbow line and another upside down rainbow line and that will be for the shape of your eyes next you want to make a circle make sure the inside circle touches the top and the bottom of your eye shape that is the iris of your eye or the colored part and then you need another circle for your pupil. And then depending on which way your eyes are looking, or maybe they're looking straight ahead, you can make a little nose. So you can just make a little curved line. It can look like a little J for your nose. 
and then we're going to make our lips. Now, you want to think about that vocabulary word proportion. So we don't want to make our mouth huge, right? You can kind of see how big the eyes and the nose are. And you can make your mouth should go to about the middle of each eye. And you can look in the mirror to see if you have, some people have fatter lips and some people have thin lips. So when you look in the mirror, you can look to see about how big your lips are. Okay? Good job. And then your ears. On the sides, start about the middle of your eye and you're going to make a C shape on each side for your ears. And then you can make another little line on the inside for the inside of your ears. Good job, boys and girls. Now, we're gonna draw the hair. Now today, my hair is behind my ears and it's up in a barrette, but you can definitely see my waves, my wavy bangs. All hair starts from the top of the head, remember? So I'm just going to make some crazy waves here for my wavy hair. And then it goes around behind my ears and it's kind of like tucked back behind my head in a barrette. So I'm going to make a few curved lines so it looks like my hair is pulled back. And then there's the pieces that are not in the barrette that are just hanging down. But they're wavy too. So I'm just going to make some wavy lines like that. Now, if you're a boy, I will give you an example here. If you're a boy and your hair is, your face is like this, you might have bangs, so you'd have a zigzag line. And then maybe you have some waves up on top. But you have shorter hair, right? So these would be your eye shapes, okay? But then that would be what your hair looks like. Okay, and then your ears would be down here. So that's an example of boy hair. You would want to do a zigzag line if you have bangs. So I want you to do the best you can. Portraits and self-portraits are very hard. They're one of the hardest things to make, boys and girls, if you can imagine. Okay, so there I have my face, and now I want to make a shirt. So, you know, I might just draw everything with this color and then go back and trace it. So, I'm going to make a V, and then give myself a little collar. And then some of my hair might be in the front. And then shoulders. So that's, that's the V of my shirt and my shoulders. Good. Now this is the fun part. This is where you could add some detail in the background. Now with our ice cream project, maybe you want to draw a horizon line and make wallpaper and a floor. Or like in my self-portrait, I made my ice cream parlor design on the top with a red and white striped design or pattern. So you can do whatever you want in the back. So maybe, hmm, 
I, you know what, I think I want to divide mine in half. So I'm going to divide mine in half like that. And on the top, I think I want to make, I'm going to wait and I'm going to use color, but I'm going to make some spiral lines. And then on the bottom, I think I might just use one solid color. So I'll show you how I'm going to do that in just a minute. Right now, I want you to think about your eye color. Okay, This is the iris or the colored part of my eye. And I have blue eyes. So I would color this area blue. And my lips are just a light pink color. Let's see. The inside or the pupil of my eye is black. Everybody's is black. Okay, so you can make it black. You can also make eyebrows. Remember, eyebrows are little individual hairs that go around your eyes. You can also make eyelashes later after we use our skin color, which I'm going to use apricot. That's probably the closest that I have. I have peach too. Uh, peach might be a little bit closer. Okay, yeah, peach is a little bit closer. So I'm going to use peach and color my skin. Now, if you want to go back in and make your eyebrows the color of your actual hair, you can do that. If you want to draw anything darker, you can. I might go back with my with my brown, my actual brown, and make my eyebrows stand out a little bit more. And my nose and my lips. Yeah, because I want to be able to see those. So your ears would be your skin color and your neck. Boys and girls, did you know a crazy fact? Girls actually have longer necks than boys. I know. Leave this part of your eyes white. Leave that part of your eyes white. And then I'm going to go back with my brown. I'm going to color a little bit of my hair brown. I might add some more lines through it to show my strands of hair. Uh, my hair is a little darker this time of year. Remember, all your hair starts from the top of your head. Now, while you're coloring everything in, you can think about what color you would like to color your shirt. I would like you to color your shirt your favorite color. So remember, I said that green is my favorite color. So I'm going to color my shirt green. You know what? Some of you girls that have highlights, if you have like purple or pink highlights, you could draw those too. Wouldn't that be fun? Or maybe if you just want highlights, you could add a little highlight for yourself. Okay, so my favorite color is green. So I'm going to color my shirt green. I'm going to use, let me see, this is yellow green. 
for my collar of my shirt. And then let's see. This is, I have a few different colors of green. Let me see, this is forest green. I'm gonna turn my paper a little bit because I wanna color sideways across my shirt. Try to go the same direction. It looks so nice when we go the same direction. And I'm kind of using the side of my crayon and picking up a little bit of texture. I love texture. Okay. Now, I think the bottom down here, the bottom of my paper, I wanna just color that purple. It's a beautiful color, shade of purple. And then you can really see my shirt. And like I said, you can do any design you want in the background, but I love spiral lines, love spiral lines. So I'm going to give you an example. First, I'm going to color the whole back with this lighter green. I just can't get away from green. I love green. Love it, love it, love it. This is actually sea green. I found a bunch of strange colored crayons and it's kind of fun. So you can see I'm turning my paper a lot, boys and girls. If that helps you color an edge better, do it. All right, now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take all kinds of fun colors. This one's called Strawberry. And I'm gonna make different colored spiral lines all over the background. This one's called Macaroni. I told you there are some funny colors in this box of crayons that I found. This one's called Pacific Blue. Hmm, probably after the Pacific Ocean, right? Ooh, here's a purple. Loving that. So boys and girls, have fun with this. Think of all those lines that we made and pick one of your favorite lines and start using it in the background. Maybe you liked the zigzag line. Maybe you liked the wavy line. Okay, this is your creative choice. I think now I'm going to add some baby spirals because I really want to fill up this background with spiral line design. So fun. I love making art, boys and girls. I hope you do too. Ah, I love it. All right, boys and girls. There is our self-portrait. Oh, I can't wait to see yours on Art Sonia. Make sure when you're drawing it, it looks like you. It should have your hair color and your skin color and your eye color. All right, and remember, make your shirt your favorite color. All right, bye boys and girls. Have a wonderful day.